What's up? Um, uh, this is State of Mind. You're probably wondering why I'm wearing this San Francisco because I'm a big San Francisco 49er fan. I love Jimmy Garoppolo. McCaffrey's in there now. Uh, Tebow, Kittle. Uh, we can just keep Fred Ward. We go down the line. That's why I'm wearing the shirt. Please subscribe. I, you know, my team, Anthony Camarada and my wife, Paula Bernard, we're, it's a family affair. We have about 80,000 subscribers. We're, and when we hit 100, I get a plaque. There's three milestones, 100,000, a million, and 10 million. I'm going down the stretch. Please subscribe. Hit the little button right here. All right, who I have today is someone who, damn good actor, and I really didn't know that until I worked with him recently. It just aired. And we went toe-to-toe, and he, we were, he was right there, man. I was proud of him. Kick, kick butt. I love that. He had fire in his eyes. He was confident, and I, it was great. Um, Thank you, brother. You're welcome. Uh, he's here today, and his name is, he's on General Hospital. You guys, when you see him, you know who it is. <laughs> <laughs> his name is Taj Bello. Hey. What's up, man? How you doing, man? First of all, that jacket's cool as hell. You like it? Yeah, like man. It? Where'd I you get it? Oh, let me, let me do the angle here. Oh, yes. It's a swan. It's, it's a swan, right? I don't know what it is, but it's, a bird. it's cool, man. Thanks, I like brother. it. Maybe I'll buy one. But then I, got I, have, you. I don't want to copy it. You know? Where are you from? Where'd you grow up? Originally, I was born in Texas City, Texas, and uh, spent a lot of time there and also Houston before relocating here at yeah. 12. At 12. Yeah. My wife's from Houston. Awesome. Yeah. Good city. I, I like it. I've been there. I've been, mm-hmm. I've been, I don't know where I've been because I forget, but I've been all over doing appearances and stuff like that. Um, how was it growing up for you? That's a loaded question. I know it is. <laughs> There's a lot. Um, the relationships with family there uh, is one of a kind. You know, you grow up with, with uh, I have a huge family, cookouts, yeah, yeah. Uh, barbecues, obviously. And, you know, there's, Texas is, there's no, yeah. there's no, I can't find it here. I yeah. can't find the same you yeah, know, type you of barbecue. Did. It's just. No. I try, though. You no, know, I, yeah. I go to the places owned by the people that migrated, and I'm like, yeah, let's. And they're having margaritas. And <laughs> like, wait, this isn't, this isn't Texas ribs. <laughs> what is this concoction? Uh, and then that plus uh, my dad is a Louisiana Creole, so. Ooh. I had that combination of like the, uh, you know, the, the, the pot boils with the crawfish and the potatoes and yeah. the corn and everybody being over and celebrating that and that, that culture. Um, so I do miss that. I do miss. You left it at how, how old? 12. And you came to L.A.? To be an actor. <laughs> and then you got <laughs> Boy Meets yeah. World. You know what? That's Was funny. that the big, that's the big break. That one was uh, after auditioning for Disney for a lifetime, it felt like. They finally cast me in, uh, in Boy Meets World when I was 19. Um, it took... How many years, man? Man, oh my God. You know the Disney Channel building in Burbank? Yeah. Like the yeah. 20 plus? I was there like every weekend. Producer sessions, testing, chemistry checks. Just couldn't cross the line. So maybe... Seven or eight years. Are you serious? Auditioning for the Disney Channel. And how, because my, my son, who's an actor, I told mm-hmm. you about, um, right away he got something kind of big on HBO. Right. But now he's getting frustrated. I'm like, Joshua, mm-hmm. they liked you, they, but they just, you don't fit here, you're going to fit somewhere else. And you did it for how many years before you... My God, before I mean, I, I've had roles in the middle of it, but before I yeah, yeah. had the things that I, I started. What kept for, you going, man? My family. Um, that helps. Yeah, their, their unwavering belief in me and in, in what I had to bring um, just to characters and the life that I have inside of me yeah. you know, that I wasn't aware of at that age, but they could see it, that, that life that I could bring to a room and yeah. to a, a project. So... Prayer, 
leaning on family because it was incredibly disappointing. Like my start was unnatural. Uh, my first thing I ever did, I came out here. I was a, I was in seventh grade. I'm in class, and then the principal over the intercom calls me to the office. And days before that, I, I auditioned for Role Models. Um, the movie. Oh, I was going to ask you, Paul Rudd, and what's, what's yes, the, sir, Sean, Sean William, William Scott. Scott. So I had a, just the most. What'd you do in that? I I um I was in the group of of kids that they were mentoring, and I was just asking inappropriate questions like, hey, "Are you afraid?" Oh yeah, I was remember. one of those kids. Like, are you afraid the lifestyle you chose is going to lead to dying sad and alone? Like, super <laughs> in depth questions that I have no idea of what I'm even asking about at that age. But I can I can understand it though. Yeah, I can understand. And how then. were they? Amazing, Sean William Scott just. As soon as I got there, he talked to me and my mom. And is and he, he funny? He's like, funny and he's kind. He's ah. kind, and he just explained how it goes to be prepared, yeah. how to come to the set. Um, he just he poured into me in a way he didn't have to, and I did appreciate that because that was my introduction to the industry. As and Paul said. Rudd was a, just a jerk. I just didn't get to work with Paul. <laughs> but probably I'm just kidding no he seems like a cool <laughs> dude too right yeah for sure so I mean but then you didn't get anything substantial till Boyd meets right so it was like commercials um okay the timeline the 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 greater things happened from like 12 to 14 where yeah. um in the middle of that, I had like a Reese's Puff cereal campaign to where like everybody knew this commercial I was in. They knew the rap song like that. They're like, oh, I love my R double E E. Yes. Yes. And I was like, yeah, that's me. Hey. Um, so I had those things like a, a, a national campaign. And then I booked a, a lead for the first time with Cuba Gooding Jr. and Kimberly Elise in the, the movie Gifted Hands. Uh, it's a Ben Carson story. Really? So that was kept, that's what kept me going. Because I booked a lead in a movie that aired on TNT that was nominated for NAACP awards. Oh that my was, goodness! You know, so I, I was like, if I could do this, I'm supposed to keep going. Yes, that's kind of the way it works. You know, mm -hmm. when I was out of work for two years, but as long as I could get something in six months, so when right. people say, "What have you been doing?" I could say, uh, "I just did this thing." Yeah. Oh, but after like three to six months, you, you, if you don't get anything, you can't really say. Yeah. Because then they'll go, well, when did you do that? I've got some stuff lined up, you know, <laughs> some things in the pipeline. Right. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, that would keep you going. Right. And that's the most daunting question. Oh, it's the oh worst. God. Like, hey, what have you been up kid? to? Oh, my God. I hated hearing I that hated, at that yeah. age, too. I was like, so what are you working on now? I'm like, I, I just want to throw a basketball <laughs> at a rim like, I don't even want to shoot I just want to throw the ball at the rim like I don't know what's next I'm, I'm figuring it out and I've always had that question kind of looming over uh, my head and I've processed that since 12 like what's next yeah you know if I think because I, I did a lot of stuff early but I think if when I was out of work for two years now I would answer it differently if somebody said what have you been up to mm -hmm. I would probably say if it were me now, back then, I would say, just in the unemployment line. Hmm. That's when you know you're mature, man. Right. Just tell the truth. No need for validation. Right? Bro. But it, I couldn't do it before. Oh, man. I was like, oh, I can just finish this. You're not wrong. <laughs> it's the worst thing. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. So, next <sighs> question. So then when you got this, I keep going back to bo Girl Meets Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's Girl Meets World. No, it was Boy No, wait. You're right. Hilarious. Yeah. What is it? Girl Meets World is a spinoff of Boy Meets World. Oh, it is? But it's just so natural because the, uh, the same cast transferred over, essentially. So you were in both. I was not. Oh. But I got to work with the actors, like Corey, okay. who played Corey from the original you know, Boy Meets World. He, um, he was a part of it. His dad was the script supervisor. Right. Um, so it felt... How long did you do that for? I did one episode. That's it? And then I did one of Casey Undercover with Zendaya. So I've had two guest stars on Disney out of the but that millions. Was a, but <laughs> that got you some, a little bit popular, right? That it was a great primetime booking for me. That definitely started to at least diversify what I'm able yeah. to do. Like, look at the comedy. I can... I can I can be funny. I can be a nerd. I can be... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't want to say... Corky? That was exactly what I was looking for, and I didn't want to say it because yeah. I'm like, there has to be... Uh, Corky. So what would you rather do, comedy or drama? 
Both, both. both There's a yeah. sense of freedom now when I when I do comedy that I couldn't live in before. Oh. And now it's just nice to have light. Because things. you're more relaxed. Yeah. Yeah. And I can enjoy, I can play. I can yeah. show up and actually live in the writing that is supposed to be fun as an experience. Same with, same with me now at 60, I, I'm much more relaxed. Awesome. And I could probably do comedy so well. I kind of do it in my social media and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, I was just too tight, mm-hmm. like years ago. Too dark, too intense. I judged myself very hard. I couldn't allow myself to be funny. Like any authentic comedic choice that I would, you know, generate, I would then condemn it afterwards yeah, yeah. after sitting on it for a little bit. Like, oh, I don't like it anymore. And I went through that process for a long time. Yeah. yeah. You got to stay in the moment. Right. Forget these th- the thoughts will always kill you. Yeah. Did you, what did you think of Zendaya back then? Did you know that she was going to be this thing? Funny, we actually, uh, I got to go to Horror Nights with Zendaya, of, of a few, I had a friend, well, still have a friend, his name's Nige. Um He invited me to go to Horror Nights with her, uh, Trevor Jackson, like a few like young black Hollywood actors at the time. It was a really cool experience. So I met her then, and I got to see how she was, and that's when she was starring in Shake It Up, like her, her Disney show. Um, first one that led to the next show before Spider-Man. But when I met her, she was already cast as MJ. So I was meeting her again. Excuse me. I met her at Horror Nights. I was working with her for the first time while she was playing MJ. And What's MJ? Uh, not Mary Jane, but uh-huh. Spider-Man's MJ. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. And she was amazing. Did you, did you know, did you see like this thing, like this acting extra good or, or she was just a good actress? Oh, Cause she, oh yeah. Because in, in Euphoria, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. this is the real deal, man. Right. Now, she showed me something. I was, uh, we were competing in a drum line uh, for, for, our, like, for a spot yeah. in the drum line. And they had this one moment where we were having a, a drum off. And what she did with her character in that moment was so funny. It couldn't have been directed. Really? It was like completely her. She was... Getting into the drums and getting it, getting it, getting it, getting it, getting it. It was just That's so cool. funny. She was like going all the way in. Um, and I saw it right there. I was like, that's why she's her. Wow. Like her ability to literally drum in the way that's authentically her is so full. And it's so hilarious to witness. And know? the confidence to do it. Right. She didn't think about it. She just, nah. she already decided that this is where we're going and she just took it as far as she could. You know? Wow, man. Um, you play tennis, right? Yes, sir. How good, how, you're a good tennis player? Yes. I, I guess I read that. <laughs> I guess you're Yeah. Good. I, I like to... What, what's, what does tennis do for you? I mean, what is it? Is it just exercise or is it good for the mind? Both. Um, I have an interesting relationship with tennis. I've always loved it dearly. Like, if I didn't act, I could have pursued tennis. My brother um, made it to the professional tour. At a point in life. No. Yeah. Like, he um, he established, like, an actual pro ranking. Um, I went to tournaments every weekend watching my brother play. Like, play top 50 ranked kids in America. And really? Was, yeah. Like, it was a lifestyle. So, I was auditioning and, and, and working on set. And on the weekends, I would, I, would be, I would be with my brother and my mom. And we would watch him play. So, tennis was kind of ingrained in me. Um, Why didn't you pursue that? Yeah. Oh, that's I a was, great pause right there. Right. It's, um, that's in acting. That's what you need to. That's what's <laughs> right. cool. Yeah. Because it's filled. You take those pauses when you're filled. Yeah. If you're not filled, don't do it. Right. <laughs> but w- it's indulging at that point. Yes. <laughs> so you didn't take you didn't go take that route because uh, it was like we had our things. Like I was the actor. Okay. And my brother was the tennis player. And if I could do it over again, I would. I've competed. Woo! I, I love that. Yeah. I, like, I, I love acting, but I just, I could have done both. Um, I could have done both. And I had a relationship with my tennis coach in high school. Um, long story short, it kind of cut off my relationship with tennis because I was a child actor. So a lot of times I would have to miss practice to film uh. or to audition. And at some point we were in the playoffs and my coach was upset with, the frequency in which I had to, you know, leave to do my job. 
And he cut me from the team and benched me in the playoffs because I missed practice and he couldn't show me favor over anyone else. So getting cut from the team, actually, I didn't realize until maybe last year or this year. Because I stopped playing tennis pretty much for years, like five years, six years. Like, it really damaged me because that was my freedom. Like, that was my place of being a kid, like, just fully a kid. Like I don't have any responsibility. I don't have any expectations. I don't have to win. I don't have to be the best. I don't have to walk into this room and be what they think I am, you know? I, yeah. I could just exist and be alive, and uh, that's what tennis does for me. It's just I go out there and I'm free. Do you think you could have been a professional? Yeah. Absolutely. Damn. Absolutely. I, I don't. I only feel that way about a few things, and I know for a fact, like the athleticism and like the IQ and the relationship I have to the sport of tennis. Like as a kid, I would, I like the way the word the way the game is played now. I saw that happening as a kid, and I would wow. try to play that way, but I just didn't have the physical abilities to translate that to the court. But I saw where the game was going, literally as a kid, and where it is now. I played that way. Wow. Do you think, do you now feel regret or are you cool with accepting that that wasn't the path? I'm cool with it because now I know I can get as skilled at anything I want to as yeah. a hobby. With, there's no problem with that. And then I can bring that truth to a film. I can make a movie about a tennis player yeah. and about his path. And I can yeah. educatedly and, and with actual you know resources yeah. talk about the experience, especially as a black person playing tennis. There's a... Like, Serena's an anomaly because she had her father who competed at a high level. Yeah. But if you don't have that person in your life, it's such an expensive sport. Strings, rackets, shoes, fitness, nutrition, everybody you need on your team. It's just very unsustainable unless you're winning a lot. Yeah. Otherwise, you can't afford to keep going. And other sports is set up in a way to where yeah. you can yeah. keep rising and still have some type of compensation, you know? Right. So it's like you eat or you don't. How good was Arthur Ashe? Oh, my God, legend. Now, who legend. do you think is the best tennis player ever? I don't know much about tennis, yeah, but I know enough. I'm going to go with Novak Djokovic. Really? Yeah, a lot of people will feel some type of way Is that the answer. dude that couldn't come through? He did not. Uh, yeah, yeah. his nickname that they made like a parody out of, Novak Djokovic, then they changed it to Novak Djokovic because he didn't like, you know, that's, that's, play the right. tournaments. And he could have won... So many more. Him, Majors. huh? Yeah. Nadal, like he, Nadal I heard of. I love Nadal. Nadal's incredible. I mean, Nadal, Federer, and Djokovic, they're like yeah. the big three. And they're like an interchangeable Who's conversation. Who's one more? I think Nadal's in the lead right now by like yeah. one. Oh. But it's just like Djokovic came within a certain generation of dominance that's never been witnessed in tennis before. Like he was able to dethrone the people that would not leave the throne. Now, tennis before didn't have that. Like, everybody in the top 50 were competitive. Everybody could win a match on a certain day and surprise you, you know? But Djokovic, Federer, Nadal, they held such a position to where no one could get in. And Djokovic was able to get in while Federer and Nadal held that spot. Oh, my goodness. I didn't know this yeah, stuff. No one else could do that. So there was a few others, like Andy Murray. Uh, he's a, a British player or a Scottish player. Um, he won two Wimbledons. But these guys won like a 20 plus. Whoa. And no one's ever done that. So him birthing or, or being birthed in, in that era and able to establish himself as a, a, yeah, that's a that's giant. Is... <sighs> um, let's talk about ADHD a little bit. Yeah. Because we talked a little bit about Graceland. You know, I, I, I talked to Taj... We didn't really talk much before we were in Graceland. And I just found him to be just interesting to listen to and just the stuff he was saying. And I'm feeling the same way right now. You're just so interesting to oh, watch. Oh, thanks, man. It's a trip. Um, <laughs> let's talk about that uh, and how that makes ADHD and what is that and how. Yeah. What it, ADHD. What is it? It's so funny because. Like you're always late. Or yeah, you're like not, to, or you don't, or you don't, you're late, but you don't want to be late, and then you're late. That is a big part of it. So basically, that's associated. So ADHD has millions of symptoms. I know, um, and it has shared symptoms with with uh, like bipolar, with autism. Like it has, there's so many shared symptoms. It's kind of hard to put it in a in a place, but um, that the inability to 
gauge time. Damn. Um, that's called executive dysfunction. And it's like, okay, I have to leave in 30 minutes. So I'll, all I'm going to do is the dishes, and then I'm leaving. So I'm doing the dishes, right? This is executive dysfunction, one symptom. Doing the dishes, and then I see something else. I'm like, oh, wait, I should do this as well. Great. As I'm doing this, I'm like, oh, wait, but I haven't finished the dishes. But I finally found this thing that I lost two weeks ago. It's here. It couldn't have been here, but it is. There it is. Wait a minute. What time is it? Oh, my God. I'm five minutes late. Wow. It's, it's just these side missions and this, this confidence that's false in, in how much time you have to complete certain things. Um, yeah, it, that's one. One symptom, executive dysfunction. Other things, like it's just, what is it, attention, um, cheat sheet. But that's not like if I'm crossing the street and there's a line there, I can't cross over the like Jack Nicholson in that movie. Oh, uh, uh, um, what if this is as good as it gets? Yeah, kind of thing. OCD. Um, oh yeah, yes. OCD. OCD. The See, I'm only. I, I only. My thing is bipolar depression. Anxiety. Yeah, I'm learning right. everything else. Yep. Um, so no, that's yeah, yeah. OCD. That's what Ken Schreiner has. Right. But see, like, with ADHD, it's so weird. You have so many shared things. Like, I definitely have experienced having compulsions, and that is actually what also led me to realizing that I have ADHD. Like, when I was a kid, I was bored in class, and a lot of times you need stimulation. Yeah, yeah. Um, I would literally crack my jaw. Like, I would just keep, like, cracking it in class because I, I was bored. Bored. And I was bored all the time. It was yeah, yeah, super bored. Yeah, and they would call my parents, and they wanted me, you know, they wanted me to be checked out for certain issues with my jaw. And no, it was really just stimulation. Like I just needed something else to happen, and someone could say that's a compulsion, but it's not. Like yeah. you know what I mean? Like um, but I have a little list. Yeah, I'd like to hear that. And basically, it's a uh, ADHD is the difficulty in regulating attention and focus. I think it's a little more deep than that. Yeah. Um, I can focus. It's just the inability to regulate what I should be focusing on. Um, but like scripts, you know, you can go backwards and forwards. Yes, because um, so that's the complication. Dopamine, the chemical yes, responsible dopamine. for reward and motivation. I don't need that. I love acting. It's my passion. So it's naturally aligned. I want to do this. Um, I don't need to psych myself into it. I don't have to encourage myself to do something in that uh, field. I'm but getting it's just, it. Yeah, it's the stuff I don't have any interest or relativity in my mind to associate with this goal that it's the But worst. what about that you're going to be late to the thing that brings you happiness? So that's when I'm extremely diligent um, right. and vigilant. <laughs> All the things. Um, yeah, I'm leaving extra early, like as if yeah. I'm already late. That's right. I'm prepared in advance. Um, yeah, I can't, can't jeopardize. And do that. you have to like be in an empty room so you don't see something and that, that distracts you for what situation? Like to leave on like time? to go be on time? Yeah, having an organized place is very helpful. Is my place organized? Absolutely <laughs> not. It's impossible. That's another thing with executive dysfunction. Like I just can't. I'm not. I'm not messy. I'm not nasty at all. There's like a rhyme to my clutter, and I, I'm i trying to fix it. Like someone else might see, like, oh, look at all this mail here, and I could just, <sighs> that's what I was looking for, nice. Oh. Just like that, because it makes sense to me. But at the same time, it's, it's, it's paralyzing, yeah. and it's working against me. Um, but it's the main thing is, like, if I, if I don't have the motivation to do it, I don't, I can't just find it i have to actually will myself to just do it because Damn, i yeah. have to do it and that's so exhausting what about working time. out that has become the same thing now it i have to find different ways to exercise to because nobody it. really dying to work out right i mean i live like yeah. i cope a lot physically so if i can compete like play tennis go on a hike okay you okay, know, okay something interactive i get it i get it yeah but just going to the gym and lifting weights right for an hour and a half two hours the mundane one two, three, yeah. without like challenges. Like, oh, I want to get stronger or I want to, you know, I just, it's just, it becomes a, t a, a, a chore. Yeah. And everything becomes a chore at some point. And you got to get yourself up for that. Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, and, and eventually you just have a whole list of chores <laughs> that other people are like, what do you mean? This yeah, is great. Exactly. I'm like, no, I, I hate all of this. <laughs> but you can get through that. I have to, I have to be in shape. I have to like the, the, is there medicine for that? Adderall. 
Um, Vivans. Oh, um, yeah. I've, I've heard of Adderall. But now there's a shortage. Um, oh. Yeah, like, uh, but the president, like, announced that you have to talk to your psychiatrist if you have a prescription because there's literally a shortage and it's not going to be in production. Oh. So that's problematic. Um, but Adderall does, yeah, yeah Adderall, like, yeah. other people, you know, are, like, crazy on it. and They give it to kids that... Or yeah. too hyper and stuff. Or take out or helps them like just dial, yeah. dial things in yeah. because it just drops dopamine in your system. So like whatever mundane thing I would have hate, hated to do before, now it's already chemically wow. inside of me, so I can easily and efficiently get these things done. I just feel normal. To We're be not honest. doctors here. We're just yeah, <laughs> experience. Right. What are you doing on GH now, man? I oh you're in the. I don't know. I I'm gonna get myself in trouble saying stuff, but you're in like the. The will, I think you're having an affair or something. So, <laughs> everyone thinks that. Currently, I I am, saw you hugging her. I know. And was, you kissed her and stuff. All of that. Or maybe you didn't kiss her. No, I didn't. But, uh, you know, <laughs> to the outside eye, I can see, obviously, how it looks. A like. little bit, yeah. Yeah. It's I'm, a I'm, little It's a little written. Yeah, no. Not, you know, come yeah. on. But it, but it kind of, but not. It's supposed I to I mean, be if I saw there. you kissing her on the cheek. I could have been more, but you just hugged right. when I came in when I saw you. Yeah. But we're not giving anything away, right? But that's a cool story with, with uh, yeah. Cynthia, with Nina. And right. Leukemia, um, just the complexities of being pregnant at the same time yeah. as, as trying to undergo treatment and, and trust in the people But you're attracted you. to Willow, though, right? I mean. I don't think so. I don't think so. I I <laughs> I think my motivation is pure at the moment. At the moment, I can say I believe it is pure. <laughs> you know, I just I, I love my domestic partner. Right. Yeah. And, and Michael's a pain in the ass. My dad, <laughs> Michael, he just hates me now. It's like, Dad, I hate you. I'm gonna take you down. What did I do? I didn't kill anybody. I didn't hurt anybody. But when I killed his daddy, he was cool with that. Anyways. Oh my god. <laughs> All right, listen, before we leave, I want to ask you something. Um, or could I yeah, throw one extra thing in there about ADHD? Because that's another yeah, problem. Yeah. Like, you just have all these things that you want to say, and you're, it's very difficult to position them yes. in an articulate way or, or, or where you can follow the story. Sometimes I just throw yeah, but dude, info in there. You've been following things in here perfect. Yeah? Oh, yes. I don't see any. I'm yes. like, you're just like. Boom, boom, boom. All right. I mean, it's amazing. I love it. Cool. Um, but uh, the, Go okay. ahead, brother. Go real ahead. Real quick, real quick, real no, quick. This is, I love this. <laughs> it's just I want people to like know. Just tell them. Tell yeah. people what you want. So um, the main things, just because uh, people who love people with ADHD don't necessarily know how to love them or support them, you know? And um, there's... I'm very sensitive sometimes. Like um, I can feel things a little more deeply, me personally, and it's a symptom that's exhibited a lot, but I can feel things more deeply at times than someone else, maybe too much. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I can react out of a place of impulsivity or emotion or without thinking when I'm feeling something so heavy. Um, that ADHD makes you very sensitive to rejection. So funny Ooh. being an actor. And, you know, going through that. But being so good at dealing with rejection here made me very terrible at dealing with it in other places. So you don't necessarily voice your needs or your boundaries the way right. you should because the fear of that being rejected. Yes. So that is um, a thing that a lot of people struggle with. And um, what's the last one I wanted to say? Yes, intense mood shifts. Oh. Like, man, I, I, I had an appointment before I was diagnosed with ADHD. They were like, yeah, you've got some mood disorder happening. Oh. And if you, you know, and that's when I realized like this ADHD can encompass so many things. And I feel like uh, with the right people around you and just being educated in that you can live a better life. Yes. So. And you're living a better life. Now that I'm aware. Yes. Right. Because, uh, you, you know, people don't want to, like, own it. Because I get they feel it. like it'll yeah. make them different. I'm like, no, you can just live no. intelligently. Listen, bro. Here's what I say to everybody. I'm bipolar. Right. Uh, I've been through a lot, as you may know or may not know. And it just, all this, what we're talking about, 
I say, jokingly a little bit, it, it makes us more interesting people hey. than normal <laughs> people. Because they're just like, you know, mm -hmm. eh. but, you know, I, I'm starting to feel like now right. I'm feeling normal. Mm. I already went through the hell. And I may go through some hell later on. Right. But right now, in the moment, I feel in joy, peace, Beautiful. love. I can talk at the supermarket to people. Man. Where I didn't do it before. Yeah. So I get what you're saying. So on that note. Yep. What does your sister mean to you, man? My sister is a constant light as well as a constant, um, a constant reminder of what I have, what I have to be thankful for. Uh, my sister is legally blind. So that is often something that's interesting to define because she has no vision in one of her eyes and extremely low vision in the other. So she can't operate machinery. She can't drive. Um, she can't perceive a lot of things, but she literally tripped, you know, last year over something she didn't see and broke her arm. So like, it's, it's a fine line, but at the same time, it, it's, it's, it, it's, it's inspiring for me because she's a writer. She draws, she, um, she just shows me like every, every step she takes, is three or four more than I would have to to accomplish anything that I do. Damn. So it reminds me, like, dude, Beautiful. what excuses are you making for yourself today? Like, you need to get up. You need to be efficient. You need to do what you need to do because you don't even have to struggle to perceive something in front of you. Right. Like, you just got to go. Like, we all go through things, but she just... Honestly, I'm the best version of myself because I decided to start working on myself and to, to not make any excuses because she does so much and doesn't. She was born. Mm -hmm. So it's been like that in our entire You've life. You've seen it from, from day one. Yeah, and like it's so interesting because you see how people treat you. And she never wanted to have a walking stick or a cane because she didn't want people to see her as helpless or as completely blind, Dude, yes. you know, because like that's a stigma and like friends might not want to yeah. be supportive for you or someone might not love you or, emo or romantically want to yes. be with you. Yeah. And, like we finally got to that point where I was like, Maya, I know this is, I can't imagine it. I really can't, but it's what you need, you know? And it's funny because before you'd go to a counter at whatever shop and people would, Hey, how are you? What can I help you with? But now with her stick, she's the same person. People will ignore her and pretend that they don't see her there because they don't think she can see them at all. Wow. So, yeah, it's just been a very interesting Now, she can live a normal life, pretty much, or? Yes. Um, she's been learning how to. Obviously, there's like different adjustments you have to yeah. make, like bump dots um, on the the microwave, the oven, just to you know to understand yeah. like certain things. Yeah. Um, but no, the more we learn and the more we we grow together, yeah, absolutely. Does she the does she feel energy stronger? Oh my god! They, they and hear more. Or how's my that? little sister, honestly, um, yes. Yeah, All I her hear that. Senses are crazy. Like she, crazy. Like both spiritual and. Physical. And her attitude is fantastic. She's amazing. Damn. Yeah. She's my baby. She's That's how we learn, bro. Because, yeah. you know, we all complain about things and this and that. And look at your sister and look at over there, the guy who's, right. you know, and you, and you say to yourself, shut up. Yep. Shut, there's going to be so many people worse off. Right. You know, and, but a lot of times when we're in certain darkness, we... We don't think we'll be able to get through it, but we, we, we it will pass. Everything right. usually passes. Right. But um, <sighs> yeah. you got me there, bro. That's a that's it's been it's been beautiful though. Like it's, it's made you who you are. Right. Like I've right? had to care about the smallest things yes. since I was a child. and had to have, you know, a detailed understanding about certain things for the quality of my sister's life to to Right. Being assured, you know, so um, it's giving me a sensitivity. I never want to hear anybody talk any bad about you now. Oh, man. Because <laughs> I'll take care of them. Hey, let's I'm your big together. brother. I'm your big brother now, man. Thank you, brother. I, that story you just told about your sister is, is, is just amazing. 
I know you just probably talking and it's great, but just how you said it, it's like a beautiful monologue, man, about your sister. And I can feel the love you had for her. All right, bro, we're gonna we're done, man, because uh, I, I'm gonna go to sleep for about twenty hours. <laughs> I okay. appreciate you coming. Like I said, uh, you're very interesting to watch. I don't know why. I just kind of, I'm in there. And uh, the love for your sister is amazing. And it's, I could hear that all, all day, man. Thank you for that. Thank you. State of mind. Adios.